Welcome to Splitting Atom. Today for the next part of my home lab breakdown, we're going to focus on how I provide identity and DNS services to my lab. On a previous video, I walked through my entire home lab setup. Uh, the big overview I want to give you today is um, most of my lab uh, can, sits on a virtualization server called Matrix. That server is running Proxmox. And uh, inside of that server is, I've got a Windows domain server running uh, Active Directory and uh, DNS. And I also have a set of CentOS machines that are running Docker and the services that I run within my lab. Now to, quick, to give you an overview or just kind of show you my uh, Active Directory machine, uh, here we go. I've got uh, my machine, it's called Atom Domain. On it, I've got a couple services. I've got an Active Directory uh, domain services, and then I also have uh, oop, I also have DNS running on this machine. So if I look at those, uh, let's look at uh, the uh, let's look at Active Directory first. On Active Directory, I've created an organizational unit called Lab Servers, and that has all the machines that are on my network or all my and within my lab. And then over uh, in the DNS, and then one of the nice things about this setup is when a machine gets added to the domain, an entry gets logged into DNS Manager, so you get your host, your your A records are there for that machine, so that you can then resolve the machine name or the the URL fully qualified domain name for that machine uh, from within the network. So what I want to do next is I want to kind of walk you through how we add a machine uh, to the domain or how we add a, create a new machine, add it to the domain, and then add a user, uh, a domain user onto that machine. So this is my Proxmox uh, uh, dashboard and I've got a set of VMs right here and I'm going to pick on one of those. Uh, I'm going to do this uh, CentOS uh, image. I'm going to clone it. Give it a number, I'm gonna call it 501 because that's where I put all my test machines. And I'm gonna call this uh, my server. I'm gonna hit clone. And I'm doing a link clone, so this should come up pretty quick here. And so it's creating it. The machine's up. Uh, now I wanna start it. So all of my uh, images that I have out there, I have the Proxmox uh, agent running. So in just a minute here, uh, we should get the IP address of this machine. And there's our IP address. So let's copy that. And then we're gonna go into terminal and we're gonna say SSH root at the IP address. We're going to do that. Say yes. Put in the root uh, the root password. And we're logged on to that machine. You can see that I'm root. And right now the, the host name for this machine is uh, local localhost.local domain. So on my GitHub, I have a set of scripts that I run to kind of condition and set up a, a CentOS VM. One of those scripts is called join CentOS to Windows AD, and we're going to use that today to go and join this machine to the domain. One of the tricks that I've got within my, my setup is I'm running Trillium, which is a note-taking app. And when I'm building scripts, I go and put the script in there and use that to kind of uh, uh, take my notes and use that, as, use that to create the scripts that I'm going to use uh, uh, within my lab. So I've taken that, I've already brought that across, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, the first thing I have to do, there's some uh, packages that I've got to do through yum install. So, oop, I pasted on accident, I need to copy that. So I'm going to paste that in here and run this. So it should quickly go do this. Uh, the next thing, when this is finished, we're going to go set the host name. When we set the host name, we want to set the fully qualified uh, domain name for the machine. So that's going to be that my server that I called the machine. 
and add on to that the dot adam dot split adam dot com, which is my my uh, my domain name or my Windows domain. So let me paste that in here, run that, and if I say host name now, I can see that my host name has changed to my server dot adam dot adam dot com. So to join this machine to the domain, we're going to run something called Realm. And it's one of the packages we installed. And we're going to do uh, Realm Join, the name of one of my uh, Windows AD uh, uh, admin users, which is me, Chris. And then uh, we're also going to join it to that uh, into that um, organizational unit called Lab Servers. And then finally, the name of the domain is adam.splittyadam.com. So I'm going to hit enter on that. I put in my administrator, or my password for my domain administrator, Chris. Put that in, and then we're going to do a reboot. And reboot the machine. So the machine should come up pretty quickly. And one of the things I want to show you before we get there is, uh, let me bring back and zoom back in so looking at the windows domain again um, if i go into ad and i do a refresh we'll see that my server is now part of the part of the domain and if i go to dns here and i do a refresh we'll see that my server is now has a dns has an a record entry in here with the ip address of the machine cool thing about active directory and windows dns uh, and for domain join machines, this machine is on uh, DHCP, so its IP address could change every once in a while. When that happens, Active Directory and Windows DNS will automatically change that entry in DNS Manager so that uh, the, you know, the A record gets updated with the current IP address for this machine, which will make it much easier. I don't have to remember IP addresses, just machine names. So the machine should have restarted now. Let me go back out to full screen. And we're going to log back in. So we've, we've joined it to the domain. So let's go, um, we're going to SSH back on. And we're going to now call it uh, uh, my server. Dot splitting atom dot com. So we're going to connect to the machine. We're going to hit yes to that and put the password. All right, we're connected to the machine. Let's do a host name just to check it again. We have that host name. So the next thing we want to do is we want to test the uh, ADCLI and just see if that works. So that brings up all the uh, information about the domain. So we're going to do an info and the adam.splayadam.com. So we ran that and we see the domain name, the short domain name, and all the, all the other things, the attributes of this domain. So now with that in place, we've joined the domain to the, to, or joined the machine to the domain. Now what we want to do is we want to bring across the, uh, and let authenticated users of the domain log on to this machine. So to do that, we're going to use a package called SSSD. And we're gonna first thing we need to do is we need to uh, we need to uh, uh, config, uh, configure that as an authorization provider. So let's paste that line in. And so what I'm doing is I'm doing auth config enable SSSD enable uh, SSSD auth and update. So I hit enter for that. We also have to go and uh, change something in the SSSD config. So we're going to VI into that. And what we're doing is we're going to change this use quali uh, fully qualified names. We're going to change this from true to false. And we'll save that. So we've got that in place. Uh, this being Active Directory, uh, we can also, uh, we can go see if our Kerberos ticket is there just to check that everything's working. Oop. We'll just do K list, KT. 
and we can see that our tickets there. So now we've got Kerberos, uh, uh, we've got Kerberos enabled on this machine. Now I want to make sure that all of our the SSSD is started and is active and enabled on this. So let's just run these commands real quick. We run those. Well, let's go look. We're, so what I want to do is I want to run an ID command and see if that user is now, if I can ID it uh, as part of this from this machine. So we're going to ID one of my domain users. That's my personal account. And I can see that uh, when I ran that, it found the user. It found the groups this user is a part of. The big group that I want to look at is this Linux users group. I want to take and make that group enable it to uh, uh, be a logged on user of this machine. So we're going to run Realm again and we're going to do our Realm permit dash D and the Linux users at splitatom or at atom.splitatom.com. So let's run that command. So we've added that group now as users on this machine. So the one thing I want to do also, so I don't have to log in as root anymore, I want to give all the users that are part of that Linux users group, I want to give them uh, uh, pseudo, uh, be, allow them to pseudo to uh, root on this machine. So to do that, we've got to run vi sudo. So we're going to go vi sudo. And we have to add a line into this, this uh file that comes up and it's this uh, this Linux users line right here. We're going to add this right after the wheel users. So let me go down to that line. And again, all this is in my repo. So when you get to that point and you want to try this, it's all there. And I'll give a link at the end of the video or in the, the notes for the video. So there's my wheel user and I want to do an insert add the line, save it, right quit. All right, and I'm gonna do a reboot on the machine, give it time to reboot, but this time when I log in, I'm gonna log on to my server at adam.splayout.com, but I'm gonna use my Windows domain user to do that login. So I'm gonna go Chris at Adam, and hopefully the machine's already come back up. So we're just going to hit enter, put the password. So we've logged onto the machine. We're successful there. You can see there's a line here that says uh, creating home directory. So uh, those packages that I installed, one of those packages is gone. And uh, any domain users, when they log in, it creates their home directory for them. So the last thing I want to test is uh, to see that I can do, uh, I have, I have uh, root level access through sudo. So I'm going to go sudo dash I, put my password in, got it. So now I'm back to as, as the root user on this machine. And if I got to go do, act, if I have to do things that need root level access, this user can now impersonate root and do that. So um, hopefully this gives you a quick, you know, good overview. All the, the uh, information will be out there how to do this on my GitHub. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully I was much more technical today and y'all enjoyed the, being a little more technical. I know it was a lot of work in, uh, in Terminal, but uh, that's part of doing Linux. So again, thank you for your time and y'all have a good day. Uh, please, if you like the video, please subscribe. Thanks. Bye.